And in doing my research, I think I cracked the code and I've never seen anybody else talk about this. I think they're doing is instead of using a snare, they're actually using a We recently sat down with CLB producer, God bless Eli, to get all of the sauce on how to make a Drake type beat by someone who actually made a beat for Drake. And today we're gonna to be using all of his advice to make this Drake type beat. Plus we'll share some brand new clips from our interview with God Bless Eli that we haven't released yet. Today we'll be using sounds from our free Scorch one shot pack. Yes, free, you can go grab that in the description below. Plus we'll actually be using sounds from Scorch to make today's beat. Scorch is a new plugin built specifically for rap producers, people like you. It features a built-in core generator, genre defining effects, and sounds that are curated and created by sample makers, producers, all working in the industry to give you everything you need to consistently come up with new ideas from scratch. You can learn more about Scorch in the description below. What I learned from interviewing Eli is that there are several things that make up a Drake record. So let's hop into it and I'll show you what all those things are. So based on what Eli told me, the first place I wanted to go is back into the catalog. So I went to Thank Me Later and I found Fireworks, which is this great song by Drake. The next thing that I did is I found out the key of the song, which is C major. And then I also figured out the BPM, which is 89 by going to tunebat.com. Now that I had that information, I was able to start putting markers to let me know when the verse was, the intro, and I really started breaking down fireworks. So in fireworks, there's an eight bar intro. It's basically just piano. I did the same thing, but I added my own touch to it. Instead of going with 89 BPM, I went with 90, and I decided to go into a different key because C major just wasn't working for me. If you wanna add markers to your project files, Alt-T, then you can type in verse, hook, whatever it might be, and you can actually put those markers there. After you've figured out the structure of songs, you can actually save that to a template. So as you see here, I have Post Malone 145, where I structured out one of his biggest songs. I also have Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, because I was trying to do some more pop records recently. I'm able to build from that solid foundation. Eli was really big on studying the references and then picking the right sounds that would match those references. And then studying the drums, the fireworks, it got me thinking, thinking, this doesn't really sound like a snare. And in doing my research, I think I cracked the code and I've never seen anybody else talk about this. I could be wrong, I don't think I am. So you can take a snare like that and to give it the underwater effect, you can get rid of some of these highs, make it sound more like that. But it sounds really thin, it doesn't sound thick. And what I think they're doing is instead of using a snare, they're actually using an 808. So this is an 808, but when you play it higher, you start to get that snare sound. It still sounds thick, but it sounds very reminiscent to all of that early Drake sound. So I think I cracked the code there. I threw on a couple of effects, which is RC20 to give it a little bit of wobble and a little bit of width. I think that that's what they're doing with their snares. I could be totally wrong. Let me know in the comment section, but I think it sounds a lot thicker than what you're hearing when you're rolling off that high end. The next thing that I hear in a lot of Drake's music is the chopping of old drum loops. The next thing I did was take a drum loop off of Splice and I chopped out the snares and the hi-hats to do something like this. And when you add that with the 808, I used the J37 on the drum loop to give it a little oomph and dirty it up. Once I figured out the drums, I needed to move on to the sound, specifically the piano, which is at the heart of a lot of Drake records. So the piano that we're using today, it's called Blue Moon. It's one of my favorite piano sounds inside of Scorch. It's a soft piano, just take a listen to this. Just sounds so good for those Drake type records. We also created a one shot with this piano, which you can get for free. And we will be using that one shot in this production as well today too. This is the piano melody that we came up with. One of the things I did to sell the piano and make it sound like somebody was actually playing it is that I fooled around with the velocity. In Scorch, we recorded all the sounds at different velocities so that you could actually mimic how they would really sound in real life. When you hit your keys hard, a more intense sound comes through. When you play them softer, you get a softer sound. So I fooled around with the velocity. And another thing that I love to do is I love to use the strum effect in FL Studio. So when you have a chord like this, if you wanna make it sound more real, you can highlight it hit Alt S and you can use this strum tool to strum it out. So now when I hit accept, you get something like this, which is a more natural way that you would play the piano. A lot of Drake production has leads, so we added a lead. The 
this lead is also created in Scorch. And what I love about Scorch is that we have the built-in effects. So I didn't need to add a bunch of effects to this lead. I just needed to turn this center dial. And when I turn this center dial, it turned on these effects in the back end to really give it this sound. Another thing that we really wanted to emphasize was the glide. Eli talked a lot about the glide. So we made sure the glide was up around 200 milliseconds and you get something that sounds like this. It almost sounds like a female voice. Speaking of vocals, I wanted to add a female vocal to this record, so I grabbed something from Splice. Eli was really big on vocals. Take a listen to how he responded to this question when I asked him what his favorite plugin was. My favorite plugin? Yeah. My voice. Your Jeez. voice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Vocals. What are your favorite plugins to use on your voice? Only Valhalla. Only Valhalla, okay, so. That's looking at a gem right there. I ain't yeah. gonna lie to you. Bro, when I stopped using Autotune, changed my like, mind. You saw that sample I posted on my page, like mm -hmm. the Chicago Fields? It would not sound like that with tune. Mm. Reverb and like the very speed technique, yep. when you put those together, it's as if you can sing. Tune changes the note where it's not supposed to go. Mm. Like the original Drake in the Bible sample, like the vocal is not glamorous. Like it's not like, it's crazy how the harmonies are, but it's technically bad. It's like technically as like a singer, how they're all like intersecting each other, it's bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's it the feeling. Good. Yeah, it's all good. It's you know. Good. It's the feeling. It's that little pump drip, you know? The <laughs> do DIY drip, you know? So based on what Eli said, I took a very speed approach. I took the original sample from Splice, I printed it, I stretched it to give it that very speed sound effect, and then I also added reverb. The next part of the puzzle was giving the production that classic underwater Drake sound. A lot of people think that that underwater sound is a high pass filter, but it's not. Take a listen to this. People usually assume that it's a, a low pass filter um, and then I'm just rolling off all the top end. But for the most part, I'm actually degrading the sample rate. So I'm removing those frequencies from the top end. They're not even getting sampled in the first place. They don't even exist. I'm gonna pause this here because this really spoke to me. They're not even getting sampled in the first place. They don't even exist. I've seen a lot of YouTubers do down sampling to a sample after the fact, but the way that he's talking about it, it's almost like it starts there. So that's the approach that we're gonna take with the free one shot that you guys can grab right now. The link is in the description below. So we'll go to the Scorch one shot kit. We're going to use this Blue Moon, which sounds like that. We're gonna go edit an audio editor. We'll open this up. The next thing that we want to do is we wanna hover over the sample rate. I'm gonna take this down to a thousand. I'm going to hit resample and I'm going to hit accept. As you saw, the waveform just changed there. You can also do this process with the samples, but based on that interview, it sounds like some of the instruments, they actually removed those frequencies. So that's what we're doing here to give a more filtered out lo-fi sound to this Blue Moon Piano one shot. That's what it sounds like. I'm gonna drag and drop it into my playlist here. And boom, we have this new piano. The next thing that we want to do is we want to actually copy over that pattern that we had here in Scorch and we are going to paste it in here. We are going to simplify it a little bit by getting rid of some of these notes and moving everything over. And we are going to use this as the bridge to just help bring everything together. I also printed the audio and did some halftime and some reversing with some course, this initial reverse, which I love to use. Add in the drums. And now we can get into the hook. Listening to Fireworks, the hook is the real pinnacle of the song. It's where they blend in those sample chopped drums. It's where they put in that crazy thick snare. It's where the vocal sample is, the piano. We took our vocal, our piano from Scorch, our halftime piano, our snares that we did with the 808, and our chopped drum loop to get something like this. Then in the second half, we space it out. We add in the lead. And then 
me go back into the verse. And what I learned in this entire process is how much space you can create by doing that underwater effect with the down sampling. I learned how much the vocal textures, the very speed, the reverb can actually add to the production and how you can also keep it really simple. Like at the end of the day, there's just a piano in here. It's a piano process a couple different ways, but in processing that piano, I didn't need to use 10,000 different instruments. I was able to create a really strong Drake type record, which I think is really reminiscent of fireworks. And I did that all basically with just using two instruments and trying some of these techniques that Eli shared with all of us. Big thanks to God bless Eli for sharing all of those tips. You can go follow him on Instagram at God bless Eli. To find out more about our new plugin Scorch, hit the description in the bio below. Scorch is a new sample based instrument built specifically for rap producers. We took what we were hearing in rap production and we put it into a beautifully designed plugin built for producers like you. We wanted to stay true to the genre. So we worked with sample makers, sound designers and producers in the industry to bring a unique and modern sound to Scorch. Plus Scorch comes with a built in chord generator and effects to help you push the limits of what's next. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get all of the updates on Scorch. We'll see you again soon.